In the first part of this video, we looked at creating a new Excel spreadsheet, entering data and basic formatting of cells. In part two of this introductory video, we'll look at simple Excel formulas, formatting the pages of your spreadsheet and other useful tools. We'll be working with the same household expenses example from part one of the video. One of the main benefits to working in Excel is that we can use formulas to automatically display a value based on a calculation. Excel can calculate a total value using the values of other cells. This is one of the main tools that makes spreadsheets so useful for working with numbers, statistics and other data. Calculations such as addition, subtraction, division and multiplication are referred to as functions. In Excel, you can analyse and review your formula using the function bar at the top of the page. Excel is capable of many advanced formulas and functions, but for now, let's take a look at how we can use a basic formula in our household expenses spreadsheet. These cells contain records of our expenses, including dollar amounts in column C. Let's set row 10 up as a total row to display the total value of cells C4 through to C8. Let's type January totals in cell A10, then click in cell C10 to create our formula. We first type in the equal sign, which tells Excel that what comes next is a formula. We can then use the plus symbol to individually add up the cells we need to calculate by clicking on the cells we want to add together, remembering to type the plus symbol between each cell. Hit enter when finished. We can see and edit formulas in the formula bar. To use subtraction, multiplication or division, you could substitute the plus symbol for any of the other symbols introduced earlier. Notice how we have programmed our total cell C10 with that formula. Let's change our formula back to straight addition and see how, for example, if we change our rent from 300 to 450, the total of our household expenses budget updates automatically. A quicker way to add up cells is to use the sum function which shows the total value of all cells in a certain range. Again, start by typing the equal sign to tell Excel that we want to use a formula. Then write the word sum, followed by a left bracket. Then we simply click and drag over the cells we want to add up. Finally, a right bracket closes off the formula. Hit enter to save your formula and see your result. There are numerous other functions in Excel, some of which we'll introduce in the Advanced Spreadsheets video. There are two main ways to view our spreadsheets in Excel, which we can switch between by clicking on the View tab. The first is called the Normal View, which is what we've been using so far. This view shows our spreadsheet as an endless table made up of as many rows and columns as we need. The second is the page layout view, which displays our spreadsheet on A4 pages as they will appear when printed. You can choose whichever view you prefer, but if you plan to print your spreadsheet, it's a good idea to use the page layout view. From this view, we can easily change the margins on the page by clicking and dragging where we see this double arrow. You can change the left, right, top and bottom margins to change how much space there is on the edges of your page. From this view, we can also add headers and footers. Headers and footers are used to show the same information at the top or bottom of each page of your spreadsheet. For example, the name of your business, the date or page numbers. To add some text to our header, we simply click the header text and type in what we would like to appear at the top of each page. To add page numbers to our header, we first click where we want the numbers to appear. Then click Design at the top of the page and click Page Number from the section Header and Footer Elements. Then click anywhere on the sheet. This will automatically display page numbers on each page of our document. Other useful tools in Excel include Copy and Paste found in the clipboard bin and above them Undo and Redo as well as the Spell Check function in the Review tab. To copy information from one or more cells, we first select the cells we want, then click on Copy. Alternatively, as a quick shortcut, 
you can press the Ctrl and C keys at the same time. This stores our information for us to paste somewhere else, which we can do by clicking on a new cell and then clicking the Paste button, or by pressing Ctrl and V. To undo the previous action, just click the curved arrow in the top left corner of the screen, or press the Ctrl and Z keys together. To redo an action, click the curved arrow to the right, or press Ctrl and Y. To scan through our document for spelling errors, click on the Review tab and then Spelling. This will take us through any spelling errors in the document and suggest corrections. If we want to print our spreadsheet, click File and then Print. We can review the list of options before clicking Print at the top of the page or we can go back to our document by clicking the Home tab. With this knowledge, you can start using the basic features of Microsoft Excel. If you need some help, you can access the built-in Excel help feature by simply clicking on the blue question mark in the top right hand side of the page. Now that you know the basics of Excel, you can use the features we've covered to create spreadsheets and better manage your information whether at home or in the office.